Introduction Do you know that 43% of India's land surface is covered by plains, 28% of it is plateaus and less than 30% comprises mountains and hills? Yes, you are right and only 62% of our total land area is topographically usable. Lithosphere is the main life supporting system and top layer of earth is called soil. Soil is the main natural resource which is essential for survival and development. Soil covers more than four fifth part of land. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to find out mineral riches in the soil, understand the types of soil, Find out what is soil pollution. Understand the biogeochemical cycles. Study the water cycle. Understand the nitrogen cycle. Study carbon cycle. Understand the greenhouse effect. Study the oxygen cycle. Understand the importance of ozone layer. Mineral riches in the soil. Soil is an important resource that decides the diversity of life in an area. The outermost layer of our earth is called the crust, and the minerals found in this layer supply a variety of nutrients to life forms. But these minerals will not be available to the organisms if the minerals are bound up in huge rocks. Over long periods of time, Thousands and millions of years, the rocks at or near the surface of the earth are broken down by various physical, chemical and some biological processes. The end product of this breaking down is the fine particles of soil. The factors or processes that make soil are The sun heats up rocks during the day so that they expand. At night, these rocks cool down and contract. Since all parts of the rock do not expand and contract at the same rate, this results in the formation of cracks and ultimately the huge rocks break up into smaller pieces. Water helps in formation of soil in two ways. Water could get into the cracks in the rocks formed due to uneven heating by the sun. If this water later freezes, it would cause the cracks to widen. Flowing water wears away even hard rock over long periods of time. Fast flowing water often carries big and small particles of rock downstream. These rocks rub against other rocks and the resultant abrasion causes the rocks to wear down into smaller and smaller particles. The water then takes these particles along with it and deposits it further down its path. Soil is thus found in places far away from its parent rock. Wind In a process similar to the way in which water rubs against rocks and wears them down, strong winds also erode rocks down. The wind also carries sand from one place to the other like water does types of soil and soil pollution soil is a mixture it contains small particles of rock bits of decayed living organisms which is called humus soil also contains various forms of microscopic life the type of soil is decided by the average size of particles found in it and the quality of the soil is decided by the amount of humus and the microscopic organisms found in it. Humus is a major factor in deciding the soil structure because it causes the soil to become more porous and allows water and air to penetrate deep underground. The mineral nutrients that are found in a particular soil depends on the rocks it was formed from. The nutrient content of a soil, the amount of humus present in it, and the depth of the soil are some of the factors that decide 
which plants will thrive on that soil. Thus, the topmost layer of the soil that contains humus and living organisms, in addition to the soil particles, is called the topsoil. The quality of topsoil is an important factor that decides biodiversity in that area. Use of large amounts of fertilizers and pesticides over long periods of time can destroy the soil structure by killing the soil microorganisms that recycle nutrients in the soil. It also kills the earthworms which are instrumental in making the rich humus. Fertile soil can quickly be turned barren if sustainable practices are not followed. Removal of useful components from the soil and addition of other substances which adversely affect the fertility of the soil and kill the diversity of organisms that live in it is called soil pollution. The fine particles of soil may be carried away by flowing water or wind. If all the soil gets washed away and the rocks underneath are exposed, we have lost a valuable resource because very little will grow on the rock. This process is known as soil erosion. The roots of plants have an important role in preventing soil erosion. Vegetative cover on the ground has a role to play in the percolation of water into the deeper layers too. Biogeochemical cycles Biogeochemical cycles are the cyclic pathways through which chemical elements move from environment to organisms and back to the environment. Biogeochemical cycles are essential because the earth and its environment with reference to these elements are called closed system and there is no inflow of such elements from outside the earth and their amounts are limited. There are mainly two types of biogeochemical cycles. Gaseous cycles, sedimentary cycles, the water cycle. We know the water evaporates from the water bodies and subsequent condensation of this water vapor leads to rain. But even after this continuous condensation process, we don't see the seas and oceans dry up. So, now question comes in our mind, how is the water returning to these water bodies? The answer to above question is that, the whole process in which water evaporates and falls on the land as rain and later flows back into the sea via rivers is known as the water cycle. All of the water that falls on the land does not immediately flow back into the sea. Some of it seeps into the soil and becomes part of the underground reservoir of fresh water. Some of this underground water finds its way to the surface through springs. Or we bring it to the surface for our use through wells or tube wells. Water is also used by terrestrial animals and plants for various life processes. As you know, water is capable of dissolving a large number of substances. The Nitrogen Cycle Nitrogen gas makes up 78% of our atmosphere and nitrogen is also a part of many molecules essential to life like proteins, nucleic acids, DNA and RNA and some vitamins. Nitrogen is found in alkaloids and urea too. Nitrogen is an essential nutrient for all life forms. However, except a few forms of bacteria, life forms are not able to convert the nitrogen molecule into forms like nitrates and nitrites, which can be taken up and used to make the required molecules. These nitrogen-fixing bacteria may be free-living or be associated with some species of dicot plants in the roots of legumes, generally the plants which give us pulses, in special structures called root nodules. Other than these bacteria, the only other manner in which the nitrogen molecule is converted to nitrates and nitrites is by lightning. 
During lightning, the high temperatures and pressures created in the air convert nitrogen into oxides of nitrogen which dissolve in water to give nitric and nitrous acids and fall on land along with rain. These are then utilized by various life forms. Plants generally take up nitrates and nitrites and convert them into amino acids which are used to make proteins. Some other biochemical pathways are used to make the other complex compounds containing nitrogen. These proteins and other complex compounds are subsequently consumed by animals. Once the animal or the plant dies, other bacteria in the soil convert the various compounds of nitrogen back into nitrates and nitrites. A different type of bacteria converts the nitrates and nitrites into elemental nitrogen. Thus, there is a nitrogen cycle in nature in which nitrogen passes from its elemental form in the atmosphere into simple molecules in the soil and water, which get converted to more complex molecules in living beings and back again to the simple nitrogen molecule in the atmosphere. The Carbon Cycle Carbon is found in the elemental form as diamonds and graphite in the combined state. It is found as carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, as carbonate and hydrogen carbonate salts in various minerals, while all life forms are based on carbon-containing molecules like proteins, carbohydrates, fats, nucleic acids and vitamins. The endoskeletons and exoskeletons of various animals are also formed from carbonate salts. Through the basic process of photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, carbon is incorporated into life forms. This process converts carbon dioxide from the atmosphere or dissolved in water into glucose molecules. These glucose molecules are either converted into other substances or used to provide energy for the synthesis of other biologically important molecules. The utilization of glucose to provide energy to living things involves the process of respiration in which oxygen may or may not be used to convert glucose back into carbon dioxide which then goes back into the atmosphere. Another process that adds to the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is the process of combustion where fuels are burnt to provide energy for various needs like heating, cooking, transportation and industrial processes. The percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is said to have doubled since the Industrial Revolution when human beings started burning fossil fuels on a very large scale. The Greenhouse Effect the greenhouse effect is a process by which thermal radiation from a planetary surface is absorbed by atmospheric greenhouse gases and is re-radiated in all directions. Since part of this re-radiation is back towards the surface, energy is transferred to the surface and the lower atmosphere. As a result, the temperature there is higher than it would be if direct heating by solar radiation were the only warming mechanism. An increase in the carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere would cause more heat to be retained by the atmosphere and lead to global warming. Global warming results in rise in sea level, increase in global temperature. It also affects agriculture adversely increases chances of hurricanes, cyclones and floods. Increase in temperature and humidity may cause increase in disease. The oxygen cycle. Oxygen is found in the elemental form in the atmosphere to the extent of 21%. In the air it is found also in the form of carbon dioxide. In the Earth's crust, it is found as oxides of most metals and silicon and also as carbonate, sulfate, nitrate and other minerals. It is also an essential component of most biological molecules like carbohydrates,
proteins, nucleic acids and fats or lipids. Oxygen cycle maintains the levels of oxygen in the atmosphere. Oxygen from the atmosphere is used up in three processes, namely combustion, respiration and in the formation of oxides of nitrogen. Oxygen is returned to the atmosphere in only one major process, that is photosynthesis, ozone layer. Oxygen is normally found in the form of a diatomic molecule. However, in the upper reaches of the atmosphere, a molecule containing three atoms of oxygen is found. This is called ozone and its formula is O3. Unlike the normal diatomic molecule of oxygen, ozone is poisonous and we are lucky that it is not stable nearer to the Earth's surface. Ozone performs an essential function where it is found. It absorbs harmful radiations from the sun. This prevents those harmful radiations from reaching the surface of the Earth where they may damage many forms of life. Recently it was discovered that this ozone layer was getting depleted. Various man-made compounds like CFCs were found to persist in the atmosphere. Once they reached the ozone layer, they would react with the ozone molecules. This resulted in a reduction of the ozone layer and recently they have discovered a hole in the ozone layer above the Antarctica. It is difficult to imagine the consequences for life on Earth if the ozone layer dwindles further, but many people think that it would be better not to take chances. These people advocate working towards stopping all further damage to the ozone layer. Did you know, each year for the past few decades during the Southern Hemisphere spring, chemical reactions involving chlorine and bromine cause ozone in the southern polar region to be destroyed rapidly and severely. This depleted region is known as the ozone hole. The area of the ozone hole is determined from a map of total column ozone. It is calculated from the area on the earth that is enclosed by a line with a constant value of 220 Dobson units. The value of 220 Dobson units is chosen since total ozone values of less than 220 Dobson units were not found in the historic observations over Antarctica prior to 1979. Also, from the direct measurements over Antarctica, a column ozone level of less than 220 Dobson units is a result of the ozone loss from chlorine and bromine compounds. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Various nutrients are used again and again in a cyclic fashion. This leads to a certain balance between the various components of the biosphere. Pollution of air, water and soil affect the quality of life and harm the biodiversity. We need to conserve our natural resources and use them in a sustainable manner.